Hey y'all, I know I'm not gonna wait for people to hop in. I'm just gonna get right into it because sis is busy. But hey y'all, this is Kim. And I wanted to just pop on because just kind of, I, I normally don't see everybody with IG Live and I typically um, do my YouTube videos. And so, but I wanted to come on and try out, you know, this live and stuff. And the reason being is because, you know, sis is busy, okay? Um, on one hand, I want to be consistent with my content and I, you know, for those who follow me over on YouTube, you know that I put up weekly videos every week. But being that we're in the fourth quarter, I am extremely busy at my day job, not to mention we're still in a pandemic. I'm a wife, I'm a mother, my, my oldest is doing virtual school. And so I'm trying to think about ways that I can be, work smarter, but not harder. Okay. Um, probably like many of y'all, everybody's busy. And so I thought it would be good to pop on and do a quick live. Okay. And for anybody who will be watching the replay, I'm going to actually put the replay over on my YouTube channel, Kimmy, the diabetes MP. So, um, so yeah, so let's get on into this. Let's talk about what this is all about. So I get tons of questions all the time um, over diabetes clearly, and then also over diabetes medications and management. And so I wanted to take this time to kind of like answer a question. And, um, well, actually today what I'm going to do, let me say you're, oh, hey, hey everyone. I didn't even know people had popped in. So, hey guys, if you can't stay on, that's fine. I'm going to put this over on my YouTube channel and thank you. Thank you a lot. Um, but what I wanted to share today is something that I came across, um, being that it is the end of the year. Um, if you're a nurse practitioner, a nurse practitioner student, you may or may not know that all of the different boards that put out our guidelines, like blood pressure guidelines, um, cardiovascular things, diabetes, in the new year, what happens, they end up putting up updates. So clearly, because I want to make sure that my content is up to date and it's the most recent stuff, I've been going back through a lot of my old videos to update them. And so I've been reading a lot of um, like articles and just doing a lot of different research, not to mention I'm working on something that I'm going to be announcing really soon. But um, what I came across was a couple of articles that talked about the steps approach. And I wanted to share this with you all just in case, you know, you've never heard of it and also to help you with your practice. Okay. So what is the steps approach? Now, before I tell you that, let me just remind you guys that if you haven't noticed, I've been really trying to focus on prescribing our best prescribing practices as well as talk a little bit about medications okay and so i have some things that are coming out here in the recent in the future so just bear with me but this steps approach falls right in line with it and it's an acronym that basically is the approach to diabetes management and it's a five point patient oriented criteria of things that you should consider now I put out a video a few weeks back about pay, um, prescribing considerations and I found it very interesting that a lot of the things that I had mentioned was in this approach, okay? And this was an article, the main article was um, put out about a year ago through like the family practice um, journal or something like that. And I'll make sure to link all of that in my YouTube when, it, when I post this on YouTube in the description box so you could read the whole thing if you wanted to. But I just wanted to summarize what the steps approach is because I thought it was very interesting Interesting, and I know it wasn't taught to me when I was in undergrad or when I was in grad school. So let's hop right into it. I got my little trusty notes here. So there we go. So like I said, it's basically like a concise and organized way that you can start to consider what medicine that you would um, pick for your patient, what would be appropriate for that particular patient. Anybody that follows me knows that I have said this a lot, that one diabetic is not 
There's no one diabetic that's the same, basically. So what may work for one person may not work for the next person. So you really have to have kind of like a good way of thinking of like, what is my decision tree? Um, when I go through picking out what medication may be appropriate. Now, clearly by the algorithms, metformin is metformin is first line medication, but we also know that metformin is not appropriate for everyone. Okay. And again, I've made videos over this. If y'all want to go back and watch all those, that's fine. So this steps approach helps you be able to have a decision tree and set up one that would be good for you. So let's hop right into it. Of course, it's an acronym, S-T-E-P-S, -E okay? And the S stands for safety. Now, basically, what you want to really be watching here is if it is any, if there's any black box warnings, um, you'll be surprised. There's quite a lot of medicines that have black box warnings. Now, some of them are rare, but they're there. So you do want to be considered, you want to consider those things. And if you have a patient that would be more at risk than, you know, maybe another patient, you want to keep that um, in mind. Of course, any contraindications, you want to basically lay that up on the patient that um, that's in question. And of course, any problematic side effects. I mean, like there are some side effects that are very mild, like, you know, GI effects. Maybe somebody may feel nauseous. Well, you know, people can, there may be people that can push through that, but then there are some side effects that are very problematic that people, like you wouldn't want to put certain people on. And that's what they're talking about when it comes to like safety. So then the next letter is T and it's tolerability. And so that kind of bounces off of problematic side effects. You know, if a person cannot tolerate something, even if it's something like nausea or it's like diarrhea or something like that, you know, if they're not going to tolerate it, they're not going to take it, you know, and it could be the best medicine in the world. But if they, every time they take it, they feel sick. Every time they take it, they vomit. Every time they take it, they have leg cramps or something like that. They can't walk. It takes away their quality of life. People are just not going to, they're not going to, they're not going to take it. And you have to consider that. Okay. You really do. Because what we are looking for is not for people to do what we say. We want people to be adherent. Okay. So like I said, it could be the best medicine in the world, but it, it's, it's not going to be for them if they're not taking it. Okay. So that's T, tolerability. Okay, E is effectiveness. Now, one of the things that you definitely want to be um, looking at is two things, a couple of things. One, how much will the A1C be brought down? Okay, now some blood, some classes, drug classes only will bring down the A1C a smidget. But then there are some that will bring down the A1C 1%, 2%. You know, and to be quite frankly, you know, to be quite, quite frank with you, if you have somebody who is at a nine and they take a medication paired with lifestyle modifications and bring in and, and a medication class can bring them down two percent, they go from a nine to a seven. That's a big jump, y'all. You know what I'm saying? And so anywho, you want to consider that. You also want to consider if the drug class focuses on a, the fasting blood glucose or the postprandial, okay? And there are some that focus on both. So you do want to look at your patient and say, okay, how far do we have to go until we get to go? And then what typically is their issue? Are, there ha are they having high fasting? Are they having high after eating? They have high sugars. Those are the things that you want to look at, okay? Then P is price, okay? Now, I don't know about y'all, <laughs> but I have my demographic typically is Medicare, Medicaid, and it's not all of them, and all of them are not, you know, low socioeconomic, but the vast majority of them are. And you have to keep that in mind. When you have somebody that literally is on a fixed income and they have to decide if they're going to get their groceries, 
put gas in their car or medications, you do the math. What people are going to do? I mean, come on. So you got to keep that in mind. And then also, that doesn't mean that you can't use medications, but you probably are going to have to get a little bit more creative as to how you're going to get this covered. There are many different resources out there. I had an Instagram post not too long ago where there were some people that were putting different resources that they use. Hey, how are you? They were putting different resources that they use for their patients. Go back and look at that a little bit. And even if Okay, even if you're on now or if you're catching this replay, put them in the comments what resources you use to get medications covered by your, you know, covered by different insurances. But you're just going to have to understand it may be an uphill battle when it comes to some of these medications. Typically, the newer the medication, the more expensive it is. It's just kind of how it is. You know what I'm saying? So you do have to consider that. And again, like I said in the previous, one of the previous steps, could be the best medication in the world. But if the patient can't tolerate it, if they can't afford it, it's no good to them. Okay. Um, and then lastly, the last S is simplicity. Now, I'll be honest with you guys. I, at a point in time, I served, I was, my, my role was a primary care provider. I am currently not in a role of a primary care provider. Um, I do a lot of wellness and I do a lot of education and community health. So I follow behind a lot of primary care providers. And this could be fellow nurse practitioners, physician assistants, even physicians. And I'll be honest. The medication regimen sometimes can be so complex that it confuses the heck out of patients, okay? Now, you got to understand, now, sometimes you can't, there's no work around that. You know, maybe they are going to be on triple therapy, you know what I'm saying? They're going to have to draw up insulin, you know, but you always want to come back and make sure, and this is like something that you're going to have to revisit the simpleness within the regimen for the patient. Do they understand how to draw up the insulin? Are they able to see it well enough? Should you switch them from a vial to a pen? And then that goes back to that P, can they afford the pen, depending on what tier it is with there? You know, there's lots of factors there, but I have definitely seen where patients and I don't know what happens, y'all. I don't know where the breakdown is because I'm just hearing it from their end. But like sometimes people feel like these medications are optional. Like they're like pain medicines, you know, like when I feel like my sugar is high, that's when I do X, Y, and Z. And I have to ask, you know, just to be thorough, like, you know, are we explaining this enough or is the regimen too complex for them? You know what I'm saying? Maybe we're going to have to work them up to that. You know, get them to a point where they can understand it better. I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But simplicity of the regimen is definitely something to consider. Um, something that really surprises me, and I don't know if any of y'all have dealt with this, but I have come across a lot of people who are highly successful people who are illiterate. People who cannot read or write, but they're very successful, you know, and you wouldn't even know until you talk to them a little bit more. You know, like I said, I do a lot of wellness, so I have to do a lot of screenings and I do a lot of education, patient education. And so that puts me in a position where I am seeing, I'm having to ask questions. I'm having them to write things. I'm having, they're having to like, you know, teach it back to me and things like that. And I pick up a lot of people who cannot read and write. And a lot of these people, you would not be able to, you wouldn't know that about them. So you really have to make sure that, you know, even if you write down, let's say you start a patient on insulin and you put them on a sliding scale. That can be very confusing when this is new, right? So let's say you go and you take your piece of paper and you start writing stuff down, okay? If your blood sugar is this range, give yourself this many units. If it's this range, give them this many units. But what if the person can't read? And some people, depending upon, you know, their generation, they're too proud to tell you that they can't read. 
And that's something that I'm really learning as I'm pursuing more of like nursing education and diabetes education is that you really can't assume. So you really have to keep things very simple, you know. Um, and so that's the steps approach, okay, to diabetes management as you're trying to work out your decision tree as to like what medicine you would pick. You know, I'll go back and recap. Steps is the acronym. S is for uh, S is for safety. T is for tolerability. E is for effectiveness. P is for price. S is for simplicity. And I thank you guys for jumping on this live. If you want to go back and see the replay, I'm going to take this down. Instagram's kind of been tripping lately with their algorithm and how they show stuff to people. So I don't want to take any chances. I'm just going to take this down and put it up on my YouTube channel because YouTube kind of is tried and true, you know? And so I want to make sure that people kind of get this. And this is something that's really going to help me be able to stay consistent with my content, even though life is kind of busy right now offline. And so, um, a couple of things that I do want to mention to you guys before I hop off. For one, because I am putting it up on YouTube, if you don't or if you don't follow me over there on YouTube, my YouTube channel is Kim E, the Diabetes MP. I would love to have y'all to subscribe over there as well. Um, also, um, like I said, I'm doing an overhaul, going back and updating stuff because every year things update. So I'm going back through a lot of my medication um videos and seeing if anything has changed and i'm just updating some of my freebies so if you have not grabbed some of my freebies that i have i put together the np diabetes starter pack once you have that you're going to always get the updates as things happen okay and so if you haven't downloaded that please go and do that it's all free and i got a ton of stuff in there and i have more stuff coming down the pipe as well um also um i kind of like this i kind of like doing this little ig live and um what i would like to do is start taking questions i get a lot of questions uh, about medications i get a lot of questions about just diabetes in general and so i've kind of compiled some questions and i want to kind of pop on here you know, on a weekly basis and kind of answer some of your questions. So if you have some, feel free to like DM them to me. Um, it's kind of hard for me to read your questions right here, but if you DM your questions to me or even email, all that's on my profile, you can find me wherever links are. But if you want to ask a question, I can possibly use your question as one of these times where I answer the question. I want to make it quick. I want to make it like to the point and keep it moving. Um, and so, like I said, I have some questions that I have gotten and I want to do the questions that like pretty much the general, cons it's a general consistent consensus that people have this question. Okay. And so anyways, guys, thank y'all for joining me. If you want the replay, I'm about to take this down and here in a little bit, I'm going to put it up on my YouTube. So anyways, this Kim, thank y'all for joining me.